good evening. I wanted to do another video today. Um, I was watching a, a live stream and they were talking about um, uh, tables, like random tables and stuff like that. And I thought it was an interesting idea. And I brought up in the in the live chat rumor tables because I feel like it's a. I'm sorry. Let me turn my anyway because I believe it's a feature that. Um, it's very cold, so forgive me. But um, it's a feature that doesn't pop up in a lot. In fact, I don't recall it ever popping up in any modern systems, ever. And it's a shame because it's such an underrated feature. This was how we get our jobs here in the OSR games. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, even though this is relevant to basic fantasy RPG, because I've got players going through Morgan's Fort right now that are viewers of my channel, we're going to leave the we're not going to use the Morgan's Fort module instead. I have uh I have Moldbase Basic D and D and I have Cook's Expert D and D all on PDF and so I have a lot of modules actually for those too. And the the module that Morgan's Fort happens to be based on is B two, which is the keep on the borderlands and the Keep on the Borderlands is actually um, has been used as a as a good example of what a sandbox adventure is supposed to be, and it has been that way for the last several years. And so, uh, Morgan's Ford is very similar, and is really it's its own thing, but it's almost like a redressing of it, if you get what I mean. So. We're going to go through here. Here's here's what uh now the keep on the borderlands of course is written by Gary Gygax himself. You know meant for players one through three as the basic D and D set uh, happened to be based on like uh it got players that far up, up to level three and it was really to kind of help prepare for the expert set and the advanced dungeons and dragon sets and everything like that. And basic sold so well because a lower level adventures b um, it it was an easier system to learn. So uh, we're going to I'm going to go to page seven of uh, of the Keep on the Borderlands and uh, under section three it talks about rumors. Okay, and so uh, to quote the module. Information from inhabitants of the keep might be gained by player characters. You may give one rumor, and you referring to the dungeon master, uh, at random using a d20 to each player as starting information, uh, information. Other rumors may be keyed to other persons in the keep. For example, talking with the ta taverner in rumor number 15 might reveal either rumor number 18 or number 19 he will give he will give the true rumor if his reaction is good so you know you use reaction rolls which is a video I'll probably make one day do not give out all the rumors you may add whatever false rumors you wish but adding to the amount of true information is not recommended the false rumors are noted by an F after the number now we'll say this Morgan's Fort leaves the false rumors up to the game master to decide, and so um, all false rumors in the table could actually turn out to be true if the if the GM wants to make a true adventure with it, and you know, so on and so forth. However, you know, um, if you decide you don't want to do that, that's good too. And something I brought up in the stream is because we were talking about random treasure generation, right? Um, and uh, kind of goes back to the rumors in that the legends and myths surrounding a certain location might not necessarily be true. For example, I got my players going through Morgan's Fort right now, and they're they're going to the old island fortress, which is uh, a big challenging dungeon for level one players. There happens to be some rumors attached to this particular dungeon that I'm not going to spoil. Um, 
but some of these rumors might not be true either. It's up for me to decide. Um, and you know, anybody who's ever ran Morgan's Fort, you get what I'm talking about. Yeah, and you also know some of the stuff like particular about the second level, right? So, and that's all I'm going to say. It was for that purpose that I actually reconstructed some things because. It's a free PDF module. Anybody can get a hold of it and therefore spoil it for themselves. So, um, anyways, we'll get right to the point here. Because I've already killed like five minutes and not even talked about it. So, rumor table. So, we'll use the example that I was talking about. Talking to the taverner in number 15. So, we go down to number 15, which has a legend next to it indicating that it is false. The rumor is the bugbears in the caves are afraid of dwarves. This is actually a false rumor. But talking to the taverner number 15 for about number 15 might reveal either rumor 18 or 19. Uh, Eighteen is beware the mad hermit of the Northlands. And Nobody has ever returned from an expedition to the caves. So that's there's a lot of interpretation that you can you can kind of come up with on that, right? So it's all up to how you interpret how this how number fifteen is going to reveal the true nature of number eighteen and nineteen, right? So to go through the rumors, though. Um, You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven false and thirteen true rumors, right? So it's all up for for the dungeon master to decide um, how to give this by ro you can either roll if you really want it to be truly to the spirit of the game, or you can let a rumor you know, just kind of flop out, like, depending on what you want to run, right? So, it, it's just like, the whole thing with Morgan's Fort, for example, I've let a rumor flop out, but I used a random roll for it, too. So, it, you know, it, they got a rumor that may or may not be true. Supposedly some treasure, right? And the possibility of a magical item. So, which, I mean, most of my players are fairly familiar with OSR games, and they're fairly, fairly familiar with, actually, basic. They're actually familiar with um, all the Beckme set, to be honest with you, uh, B-E-C-M-I set, which is Basic Expert, Companion, uh, I can't remember what M, Master, and I can't remember what I stands for. But anyways. Uh, they're familiar with those sets, and so they they know the nature of these games, you know, right? So, um, they know how randomness comes into play a lot, but, of course, you could always plan things if you so wish. I mean, nobody could ever call you out on it for if you do pre-plan what's true and what's false, but... Um, but the whole thing with the rumors, right... So the whole thing with rumors is that it's not a feature that's very prominent in these modern systems because most of these modern systems are fairly linear. They they they're not really sandboxy. You got people that think they're sandboxes, but they're not really. They're they're. I don't want to call them railroads because that's not really what a railroad means. Like a railroad is hitting all these story points regardless of what the characters do, whereas linearity implies a straight point A to point B, but you can fall off the rail. You know what I mean? You can fall off the path from point A to point B in whatever way. And it's actually one of the reasons why I disagree with dice fudging, because... In my opinion, if you fudge the dice just so you can have it make narrative sense, then that's no better than 
it's funny how many people hate railroads, but they'll railroad their players in that way. But, um, because you take player autonomy away. But, so, we'll, we'll take, for example, let's go... Aha. Uh -huh. Here's what it was talking about. I read that wrong. So, you, you talk to Tavern. Uh, so... If you talk to the taverner, he might reveal the truth about 18 and 19. So, um, so 18, 19. So 18 says, "Beware the mad hermit of the Northlands." That one's label is true, uh, and because I read that wrong, the number 15 rumored has nothing to do with it. I read this whole thing wrong, and nobody has ever returned from an expedition to the caves. It's false. So you go down to number fifteen on the on the legend is what I should have done. I should have prepared better. Have you? Can you tell I haven't run this before? I would love to though. I really would. I just need to read up on it. But it's kind of hard to get the PDF out there when there's when it's a little bit harder to get a hold of than. I mean, you can do it off the drive through but anyways, um, so anyway, you, you, you talk to the taverner here in number 15, right, and let's see here, it, it, it describes, hold on here, all right, anyway, my wife needs to talk to me for something, so we're going to briefly go over the tavern. Uh, section we're cooking Thanksgiving dinner. Yes, we celebrate Thanksgiving. Die mad about it. Um, this place is the favorite of visitors and inhabitants of the keep alike. Obviously, the tavern, the modern dislike of the tavern is really stupid to me because in medieval times, this was it, it's the same as the pub, it was where everybody from all walks of life gathered from the highest of nobility to the poorest of peasants. To discuss things and so it makes sense for travelers and locals to get together to discuss jobs and adventures and rumors and stuff like that it, that it's the hub the modern dislike of it is idiotic to me and it's you know, more in favor of railroad stuff but we pretend it's not railroad so even though it is anyways so the food is excellent the drinks generous and good the place is always active with 4 to 16, roll of 44, patrons at any time of day or night. The bill reads and goes through the whole menu, uh, which is not very large. But the, the barkeep, if talking with a good customer and drinking to his health, will sometimes talk about the lands around the keep. One drink per story, half of which may be true. He is known to hate small beer and love honey mead. There's a 50% chance that 2 to 5, roll a d4 plus 1, of the patrons will be a mercenary men-at-arms looking for work. So there's your retainer right there, right? Each will have leather armor and a shield. And, you know, I ought to talk about retainers one day because that's another feature that has disappeared. And a sword and dagger, you know, like a fighting man would. Like, daggers have a lot of use. All other desired equipment must be purchased by the employer, including missile weapons and dungeon gear. Wages for duty include all gear purchased, room and board, and one silver piece per day of service. If no gear is purchased, the cost rises to one gold, gold piece per day. Note that a mere spear or minor equipment is considered as no gear. It is always necessary to buy mercenaries a drink before discussing terms of employment. There is a 10% chance that each of the following persons will be in the tavern at any given time. Go through the list. <coughs> but let's talk about the... Let, let, let's talk about... let's. That's enough about the retainers for now. So let's talk about the taverner. So now that we know what his tavern looks like. The taverner is a normal man. He has an armor class of 9. He's level 0. So, you know, like... Um, in Morgan's Fort, that would be like, um, it, like in basic fantasy RPG, a level zero character is considered a, um, what is the abbreviated term? Because it's actually technically in the fighter class, and, 
uh, NW, which stands for normal man. That's what it stands for. So it'll be like normal man, basic fantasy. So he's an AC of nine, and this is Thacko, by the way. Uh, with a level, he's level zero with a hit point total of six. He has uh, one attack, uh, morale is seven. Uh, he rolls uh, one through six for his attacks, and yeah, you know, as are his son and the pot boy. So, like, they give their stats too. Um, but in time of need, they will don leather armor, so they will, you know, they. And carry shields, so they increase their AC to six and bear arms against attackers. The place is also served by his wife, daughter, a serving wench, and a scullion. The owner and his son each have 2d6 gold pieces in their purses. The wife, a d6. All others have 2d6 coppers. The cellar is where drink and food are stored and prepared, where the servants sleep. The family sleeps in small loft, hidden in an old crock underneath. Yeah, okay, it goes into more of what's what's in his house so anyways so this bar key right so we know that you know even though he's a level zero character he can defend himself and stuff like that but we know that we, we get a little bit of his personality that he's that if he's talking to a good person uh, and a good customer and you know you roll good on your on your um, reactions and stuff like that he, he will well I mean of course the Dungeon Master Rose reactions, but anyway, so he will talk about land surrounding the keep, so he can tell you whether or not to go back up. He will tell you whether or not it is true that you should be aware of the Mad Hermit of the North Lands. Now, this in and by the way, if you are, well, I mean, don't, don't watch this video. I guess if you're planning on playing this, but. Anyway, so the the players don't know that number eighteen is true, and the taverner, if if the taverner is in a good mood with his reaction rolls and stuff like that, um, he'll he'll tell them, yeah, it's true, you should be aware of the mad hermit. Because as far as the characters know, there might not even be a mad hermit. In fact, actually, if you really want to throw a wrench into this, you could actually make this false. Like you can redo this whole entire module because. That's the way these old modules are made. You can reconstruct everything, and so there might not even be a Mad Hermit. So, number 19. This one is one of the false ones. Nobody has ever returned from an expedition to the cave, so it's false. There, somebody has, and he probably points you in the direction of somebody who has survived. But, alternatively, you can make that true. Everybody that has ever gone here has died. Now, for example, the whole thing with Gold Island Fortress, right? So I made the comment that, um, and I'm pretty much done with this, so I'll exit that. I made the comment that it's a very popular exploring spot, and it is because it's like what it's like a main feature attraction. This is how Morgan's Fort gets gets visitors all the time. Promises of treasure and a possibility of magic items lay within this fort, within the Old Island Fortress, right? So those are rumors. But the fact is, people do go to this old island fortress to explore it. Now, how many people come out? The only thing that players know that's true, and it's backed up by Garnoff, the tavern keeper, is that it's it, that people don't go very far in because it's such a dangerous place. Like the, the players found out in uh, my my Thursday night live live games, they found out that very fast because they TPK'd. Uh, after going out of the octagonal shape room and they were going down the hallway has an intersection and there's wolves in in one of the intersections killed they took like two wolves with them and they ran off a third but you know still those wolves were uh, hell bent on eating them so and they succeeded so anyways the just to use this as a base, I guess. If you decide you want to homebrew your own world, it's one of those things where I say, build a 
build a rumor table, right? So like, and decide which ones are true, and which ones false, because it's a it's a particular. My phone freaked out, so but it's a particular. <laughs> hopefully, I'm still recording because my phone kind of. But anyway, it's a particular feature that doesn't appear very often in in these modern systems. Um, you get told a thing and it's true, and you go off and do it, or you're just hired for something straight off the bat, and it's it's. It, it, it drives me nuts that it's not a feature really anymore. Now, you could always insert that back, true, but the system is more based for, like, railroady linear stuff and not really sandboxy stuff. When people say there's a new sandboxy module coming out, it's generally not a sandbox at all, not, not in the truest terms. So, <clears throat> actually, let me go back to the Keep on the Borderlands. Let me open that back up. So, to give you an example, the, the reason that the rumor table exists, too, is because your players might not necessarily go to the first dungeon that's listed in the module, right? So, these modules usually come with several different dungeons, like two, or, two to three, but they usually have, like, they usually have a first and a second and a third. And you can sprinkle these rumors in to see which ones they go to first, which ones catch their attention, right? So, this one is uh, let me try to find it. This get a little weird. Okay, so you have the Caves of the Unknown, which is a like, and you have the Caves of Chaos. Which are the the main events of, of these? This is like the reason you buy the this module, right? So the the caves of chaos and the caves of the unknown, and I'll, I'll give you I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll bring up um, the basic fantasy RPG. Um, one moment. All right, so I have my big old stack of basic fantasy books that I have here. Yes, I buy them. <laughs> I love the game. <clears throat> so, we have Morgan's Fort, and this is the first edition. This is the one that I referred to in my uh, A Political Review that that left toy decided to try to make it political anyway. And the Chaotic Caves. So, now without spoiling anything, I can, t like, just reading the synopsis on the back, um, you got the Old Island Fortress. Uh, which is a two-level dungeon environment. And, again, I'm only reading that part because, you know, it's uh, on the back, I suppose. So, like, you're more likely going to figure that out. But, you know what, I'm going to leave the levels out. For, for the sake of not spoiling anything, I'm going to leave the rest of the levels out, right? So, you have the Old Island Fortress. Uh, you have the Nameless Dungeon, which... Um, Having thumbed through it, it's pretty harrowing. <laughs> I can't wait to run it. Uh, and the Cave of the Unknown, which is basically based on the uh, on the Caves of the Unknown from B2. Um, and then I have the Chaotic Caves, which is basically the Caves of Chaos from, from B2. And this one's a much shorter module. Like right? it, it, This one's 43 pages. This one is... Uh, 70 but this one comes with like it comes with Morgan's Fort which is basically the keep right so like you you have a town for a home base and all that and so you have um, this is just uh, one one dungeon I believe I think it's the caves itself and that's it let me see
Okay, so it includes a town for a setting. So like, you know, you like if they're ever out of, I'm going to make a connect to Morgan's Fort. So like, obviously, if my players go out, like there's going to be another town for them to visit and try to make as a base while they conquer this little area. Uh, includes a town setting, a small wilderness area with a number of keyed encounters, a set of underground layers for various monster monstrous creatures, and an abandoned manor house. Chaotic Caves is suitable for a group of first to third level characters, and a number of pre-generated characters are provided for those who wish to get underway quickly. So, like, and by the way, I do recommend uh, using pre-generated characters if you ever are in a situation where people don't know how to play and they want to just jump straight into the action like you just whip this out one night and so like um because looking at some of this stuff back here and some of these pre-gen characters <coughs> they really are easy mode because like you've got some reading through these uh these are some really great stats um i'm personally a huge fan of ola deer killer which is a female a human female fighter because she's super good. Out of out of this back here, my favorite is, um, I believe mine was uh, Thoris. Yep, Thoris was my favorite one, which is a dwarf male fighter who's very sturdy. So, yeah, that's my <laughs> that's that's my recommendation if you're looking for who to use as pregen. So yeah, like anyways. So go to get back to my point about the rumors. Like, the rumors was a way to give out jobs, and the rumors was a way to give out adventures back in the day, and it's something that's disappeared because as we've gone on, as we've gotten further along into the evolution of the game, and new renditions and so on and so forth, the need for, uh, the need for having uh, a tavern and all this disappeared. And so, because the game went into that weird Hickman model where it stressed linear story elements over over like sandboxy adventures like the whole point is like the, the whole point here right so the whole point of this is like to go looking at the rumor table which I won't read out loud um, I can easily put in Adventures, not just from this book, by the way. Uh, I could slap in the Chaotic Caves, um, Adventure Anthology. There's several dungeons and little adventures in here if they ever want to decide to go at that. Especially, I got in the Adventure Anthology number two, which comes with more. It has a kind of railroady one where the players start off kidnapped that I'm not huge fan of I'm, I'm going to tweak that and then of course i've got like uh, fortress tomb and towers strongholds of sorcery my monkey island and saga of the giants this one i can't like to eventually get to this is <laughs> for a really stinking high level play so like i'm ready for that that's gonna be cool this is a beefy book like 170 pages so anyways Rimmer tables, use them. You have no reason not to. What if you're playing an edition that doesn't have them? Homebrew them back in. There's a reason they existed to begin with. You think you're running a sandboxy adventure, but you don't have a rumor table? You're not running a sandbox. You're running a linear story. At best, by the way. You're running a linear story, and if you fudge your dice rolls, you're running a railroad. So, anyway, as always, take care. God bless, guys. See you on the other side.